Want to improve your tennis game? I'll show you how. And this is not just some fly-by-night rebounder. This thing is built to last, and you can make it for $10 or less. Interested? Here we go. This build is fairly easy. There's a lot of little parts, nothing really expensive. In fact, all of these were available in my workshop. I'm thinking this thing probably could cost anywhere from $10 or less, probably more like five. The most expensive part of this build is this one eighth inch bungee cord and probably this two and a half pound weight. I got this weight on sale for about $2. The bungee cord, 100 feet of it, is around $19, but I plan to use this for a whole bunch of projects, and you're only going to use 15 feet of it. Standard tennis ball, I got a can of tennis balls for a dollar. You're going to use a 1 inch, 1 eighth inch thick screw eye. I got this whole thing for about a buck. One cable tie. This is a barrel swivel used for fishing. I prefer these because it has a nice hinge on it, and this has got a 92 pound strength. It's overkill. You certainly can use a smaller one. A 3 32nd inch drill bit in a drill, a 1 inch screw, nothing special, and I have this left over from my giant fidget built. It's just a round piece of half inch plywood. You could use a rectangular piece. I just used the round piece because I thought it looked pretty good with the weight. Find the center and hit it with the drill, and then a half inch cap to half inch PVC pipe and a three quarter inch dowel. You can use a seven eighth inch dowel and then you won't have to do this tape procedure that I'm gonna show you. Just have to sand the seven eighth inch dowel a little bit, but I just happen to have this on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. A nice little awl is good, but if you don't have an awl, just a pointy Phillips screwdriver will work. So the first thing you're gonna do is take the one half inch PVC cap and get the dowel. It's about the thickness of the electrical tape. So you use that as a guide and then you can just cut it off. How much electrical tape? Well, you're trying to make up the difference between the dowel, which is right around 7 eighths. This is a 3 quarter inch dowel, so that's 6 eighths. That's about 5, 6 wraps, depending on how tight you make it. And then you want to have it real flush. And then you're going to cut it off right here at the seam. And then you want to sand off any of the bumps here and here and make it smooth. This is what the end product is going to look like. And I've actually drilled the hole already. All I did is I took the 3 32nd inch drill after marking the center. So you have this finished piece here, give you a sense of things. And then the screw is going to come in the, this side through the plywood. And then I'm just using this countersink to smooth this out so that the screw will be in there flush. Drilled the hole. I've sanded this all down nice and smooth. Push that in just a little bit because I want to make sure I get this screw all the way in. Some of the commercially available lines just use regular rubber band material. This is a really high quality 1 8 inch bungee, but the sleeve on this is really nice and it will take a lot of abrasion. That's why I think it's worth it. I'm going to use an interesting technique here. I'm going to drive the screw in here. You can see how flush that is. And that's what that countersink does. And then I'm just going to roll this on, hit the drill again. So that's a nice flush fit. And then you screw this down here. Okay, so this will be where you connect the bungee cord on top. Now I'm gonna lay down some wood glue to really lock this thing off. And then just hit the drive. You just wipe off this extra. That type on wood glue sets up real quick. You don't even need a clamp. It's still not completely flush, but it's gonna work. Weight goes on it like this. You can keep the weight this color, but I might paint the weight too. You have a choice. You can use black or blue. I'm gonna use green. And this base also could be used for a lacrosse ball rebounder, which I plan to build here shortly. I'm gonna head outside, hit this with some green paint, and then follow up with the rest of the build. Let's tackle the most difficult part. Just using a regular tennis ball. You can buy the tennis balls and they actually wrap cord or whatever. It looks very weak. It's like a shoelace. What I've decided to do is use a cable tie or a zip fastener. So I'm gonna use this all, so there's the hole, and I'm just gonna come in here like this, as tight as I can, and make another hole. Okay, you can see the all's coming through. If you don't have that, you could use a Phillips screwdriver. Some people will use knives and make a big slip, but I found sometimes it's really hard to seal up. So the all is all the way through, and I'm gonna use six inch cable tie. All right, there you go. So a little bit of patience, and then you get it down to about where it to or where you want it. Then the challenge is to get that little bump inside of there and I'm gonna clip it off right there 
Got it in just a little bit. I will tell you that is going to outlast the ball. And then I'm gonna just seal it up with E6000. Two little dabs. If you've ever dealt with this, it has a tendency to fill in voids and shrink down in there. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of time and then I'll probably have to go and hit it again just to keep it flush with the inside of the tennis ball. It's the next day. So that was the original color of the weight. Two and a half pounds was perfect. Put the screw back in. Just want the threads to get buried and it really allows a lot of movement and it keeps the bungee from getting all balled up. 15 feet of bungee. When I measured it out, I was like, wow, that's a lot. And when I started hitting it, I was thinking maybe it's too long. But once you get the flow of the bounce back, 15 feet is just about right. I used two half hitches on this connection to the prototype and I used a bowling knot on this end. You may be tempted to use this swivel hitch on this end, but I would caution against it. Because what's gonna happen is you'll have that piece of clipping in here like this. You certainly could. And if anybody does that, I'd like to hear how it turns out. But then you're hitting this metal part against the strings in the racket. This design, I've never seen anybody do this. So this is an original for me. If you see it anywhere else, probably somebody copied it. I just hope they give me a little credit. I'm going to take this top here and put a little clear cover on it just to protect it a little bit because I'm concerned now that it's painted, this metal piece will go in here and rub it. I noticed that it slid a little when it was on the black top. So I took an old bicycle inner tube and cut it up and came up with a round piece to use this strong double stick tape. See how it works. Tell you what, this is work zone tape. I Believe it or not, I got it at Aldi and it's really good for stuff and it's relatively cheap. And flatten it out so it gets a nice good fit. Start at one edge and just move it around. It's like dough. Pretty happy with that. Yeah, wow, that's a lot more friction. Next stop, the tennis court. Here we go. Good workout. If for some reason 15 feet is too long, and do a quick loop like that and shorten it up for like smaller, younger tennis players or less experienced like me. So the verdict is it works great. I, on the other hand, need a lot of practice. This rubber really stuck well and didn't allow it to move at all on the court or in your driveway or whatever. This worked out well. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching.